Welcome everyone. My name is Craig Shellhammer, and for the next hour, we're going to talk about creative Oracle database redo maneuvers. Now I want to stress the word creative because some of the maneuvers that I'm going to be talking about are, well, they're unconventional. Some might call them dangerous, uh, risky, but for sure, they will help us to go toward our goal of getting redo from the buffer cache quickly and uninhibited to an online redo log. And that's what we're going to be talking about for the next hour. Now, how are we going to do this? What are these creative maneuvers? Well, I'm going to start with first talking about the redo architecture. Because if we don't understand the architecture, the words I'm going to use, and, and when I just talk about things, it's not going to make much sense. Plus, there's some things that some of us have been, I'll say, have not been told the complete truth when we learned about the architecture. Then I'm going to move into talking about the log file sync weight of it. The log file sync weight of it is, is amazing, and it is one of the most feared of all weight events because it's just not a simple flip of a switch or something that we can do to, to get rid of it. It's really complicated. And really, uh, this presentation is in large part motivated because of the log file sync weight of it. Then we're going to move in and talk about multiple log writers. Specifically, this started in Oracle 12C. I think you're going to find that it's amazing. It's not apparent just when you install Oracle what's really going on. So we're going to delve into that. I think you're really going to enjoy that. Then. We're going to talk about one of the more risky maneuvers, and that's dealing with the commit write facility. The commit write facility gives us the ability. So when, let's say I type a com commit, uh, when I type a commit, I can immediately get that the commit is complete. However, the redo is not guaranteed to be on an online redo log quite at that time. So uh, that is unconventional conventional and for sure that's probably going to make uh, most DBAs a little uncomfortable and it should but as I will uh, present to you there's some really fantastic applications of this and then we're going to get into another kind of crazy maneuver and that is changing the operating system priority of the log writers now we can actually do this and we can take it a little bit further too so we're going to get into that now but before we do this I need to introduce myself. Again, my name is Craig Shallowhammer, and I'm a long time Oracle DBA, and I specialize in Oracle performance analysis. I'm a performance researcher, I'm a blogger, I'm an author of a couple books that I'm really proud of about Oracle performance, and I'm also a conference speaker, a teacher, a mentor, and I'm also an Oracle ACE director. Orapub, the company. Orapub, I like to say it's a it's a one-stop location for specialized training in Oracle database performance tuning. And I do this a number of different ways. Now, let's get into the topic for today. I want to start talking about redo architecture. Architecture is important for us to really understand what is going on inside of Oracle. Now, I want to highlight, as you can see in this shared pool, what's called private strands. Private strands is the three-second timeout. Okay? I remember specifically being taught this. I was taught that the log writer wakes up every three seconds, if it has nothing to do, right? It just wakes up from its sleep. It looks to see if there's any redo that needs to be written to, uh, to, to an online redo log. And then if, if, if it can, it will just, it'll just flush the redo buffer and we're all good. Well, it turns out that this isn't quite true. And we're going to dig into this and I'm going to demonstrate to you that. Now let's talk about the log file sync weight event. Log file sync weight event. I would say that it is one of the most feared weight events in all of Oracle. So another way of summarizing this is the log file sync is the wait time associated when a server process is actually in the process of committing. Think about all that's actually going on. We have an Oracle server process that's involved. The log writer is involved. 
There's memory management that is actually taking place. There's physical I.O. writing taking place by get into multiple log writers that started being available in Oracle 12C. Now, this is really, really a super big deal. See, before 12C, there's only one log writer. At any time you have one of anything, right, in computing, you're get, you can end up having a serialization issue. So let's take a look and see what the log writers actually did. Now, there's a lot going on in this slide, so let's look at the top part. We're looking at the parent or the master log writer. Look at the, the, the slide here. This, this log writer worker is doing nothing. It's just sleep, 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 sleep. So it's just kind of relaxing. So really, does the second log writer do anything? Is it just kind of for show? So what I did is I wanted to come up with a way to kind of perhaps force it into action. And look at those system calls. Do you see anything unusual or unexpected? Take a look. The commit write facility is amazing. It freaks DBAs out initially because it is dangerous. What the commit write facility does is it allows the users to receive a commit complete, but the redo is not guaranteed to physically be on an online redo log. Right? Now, if you're saying, wait, well, what did you just say, Craig? You heard correct. Why would you ever, ever want to use this? Well, there are some really, really good reasons. Let's take a look at the parameters now, okay? There's two of them. The first one I want to mention is the commit weight parameter. Did it really make a difference in performance? But to do this, because I've seen the bottleneck at the OS level, at the CPU bottleneck and I.O. bottleneck, when the top weight of it is log files sync, I need to actually to do, I need to do a test with both of these bottlenecks. And that's what you're seeing right here. This was a, if you look at the chart below that, or the table below that, look at the percentage change. It, we got to almost 2,400% increase in the commit rate. I mean, that is crazy fast. Talk about changing the log writer operating system priority. Yeah. Does that sound crazy? I mean, for years we have been taught, do not change the priority of Oracle processes. Why? Because Oracle expects an even playing field on all. So here's the default. Okay, the, the instance parameter is underscore, in, take a look at this PS command right here. You'll notice that the priority of the VKTM background process is 41 where the priority on all the other background process is 19. This kind of got me thinking here. Um, what if I wanted to increase the priority of an Oracle server process? Or how about another process? Now we're getting into kind of security issues here, right? So what I did is I changed the, uh, changed the instance parameter again. Now, the question I have though, is does this really help performance? Just like with the commit right. It sounds really good, it's fascinating, but does it really help performance? So, what I did is I created a CPU bottleneck, right, and then I start changing the priority. Now, remember, this is my test with my workload, and I was focusing on log file sync. So, does that mean it's going to happen in your environment? Absolutely not. So, with that, that brings us to the end of the seminar. Well, I hope you really enjoyed it. There was some valuable information here. Uh, you learned about some of creative redo maneuvers, a little risky ones, but I hope you understand that we can still, you know, break the rules, but if we're careful in doing that, we can potentially make a dramatic improvement in performance. And that is in big part what our jobs are all about. So thanks for joining me and have a great rest of the conference.